it's a new day here in the workshop and uh, this is as far as I got the other day so uh, I'm going to continue to make the cladding for the outside days for some time today so I hope you can hear me when I'm out here in the carport. The tarps are rattling a lot in the wind. It's going to be really nice to put paneling up around this structure as well but I will get there later. the door's thickness much at all. Uh, one side is nice and flat and uh, the axis I made on the back side is just not to accidentally turn the wrong side out. I will uh, look at those long boards first because there will be cutouts in those for the window. Is it this the most annoying thing? The board coming on this side, I will have to do some cutout for the window in. And I have a really ugly knot here. But that sits just below the window, so I can't cut it out. On the other hand, on this side, there will be a half board, so I will just put it here. And Break the board to the side width and then I will lose most of this anyway, I think. A little bit irritating though, because I use ordinary construction lumber, I have to pay attention to where all the knots are, especially since I decided to plane a bead along them. It's not the most elegant thing to plan over a lot of big knots. There will be lots of tear out. On the other hand, it would be a rustic look. I can romanticize about that. I decided it was better to make the bead before I do the cutout for the window. And for that, I'll use my standing number 50 combination plane. I haven't used this for beading before. I've only made grooves and rebates on it. So this will be first. And I'm a little bit thrilled about that. It's going to be really fun. So this is the box with all the cutters. It was actually a complete set. It's not always like that but I was lucky when I found this. The widest straight blade isn't here now because in the plane. So I will remove that and put one of these beading irons in. Not sure which one I will use, but probably just the biggest because it's pretty big doors. So I will choose the biggest one.
there it is let's give it a try we'll just maybe do a short test piece first and see how I will adjust this fence This is the first time this blade has ever been put to use because I think this plane on all its blades was almost untouched when I bought it. For some reason it seems you always end up Playing against the grain when you are doing moldings. I could also put a depth stop on it, maybe that will help. Create a nice bead. I just have to get the hang of the operation. A little bit trickier than I thought, but it will make pretty doors in the end. And after planing all the cladding boards, I will probably be pretty familiar with how to use it. practice when doing moldings that you start at the end doing short strokes and backing up and lifting the back of the plane when you raise it because that's much easier than taking a long stroke all the way you can probably finish with one or two long strokes at the very last but uh, have a tendency of clogging up the plane if you try to do it all the way from the back to the end at once. I'm raising the death stop a bit. Yeah, this seems to be the way to go. Another problem is how I tilt the plane. As long as I tilt it a little bit out towards the edge, it bites too much on the outside and then it digs down. So it's just something I have to pay a little bit more attention to. A little bit tricky, but it will get easier the more boards I play.
apparently it's totally possible to take long strokes from end to end. It's just a matter of getting to know the tool and adjusting the depth stop really carefully. That's my latest conclusion anyway. So now this plane is starting to get really fun to work with I must say. something that looks really rather nice with less and less effort. Of course it's also a matter of choosing the edge with as little knots as possible. New conclusion again. Turns out I do not have to change the depth stop at all. I just set it to the maximum depth I want to plane to and leave it there. It seems to uh, have more to do with uh, how deep I set the blade, just as with any planing, but it's much more sensitive here because of the bead shape. So uh, it seems I found the right depth and I can just take long stroke after long stroke very carefully and very careful not to tilt the plane that's also critical I guess I got better at that after a few boards but uh, that seems to be the way to do it you can go long strokes from end to end as long as you are careful with the, with the blade setting that also saves a lot of time because you don't have to stop and undo the bolt for the dead stop and tighten it again. I'm planing against the grain and there are knots all over so the grain direction changes. So there's a little bit of tear out. What you really need if you want to do fine work on moldings that's a matching set or half set or a couple of them at least or what you call hollows and rounds. Uh, with those you can go from both directions and uh, you use them, you can use them on their own to make different kinds of moldings but if you have a molding plane or a beading plane as I have here you can go from both ends from so you always plane with the grain and adjust where you have small tear out situations and uh, that's something uh, that you need if you want to do a lot of fine furniture making and make nice trim and so your own I have a few of them. I have. I don't have nearly enough yet. Hard to get by in Sweden anyway. There are quite a lot of them in uh, England. A bit tricky though to uh, buy stuff from England now because of Brexit. But uh, I know one or maybe two people here in Sweden who actually makes planes. So that's also an option costs a lot more than buying used ones uh, but since you will use them for a long time it can be worth it but if it's a set of uh, I can't remember how many a full set or a half set is now maybe half set is six of each or something like that full set is twice that many 
and uh, if you buy uh, that many newly made planes, of course, it's going to be a lot of money. Then it's more attractive to look for used ones. We'll see. I'll probably do a little bit of both. Find what I can on the used market and just complete the set or half set with the new made ones. Anyway, it's getting more and more fun to use this combination plane for beading. Get one if you find one. Can't stress that enough. Okay, last board is finished and I put the first door on trestles. can uh, get to measure above and below. I will uh, measure four centimeters up, one centimeter down here, and then I will mark out for the cutout for the window. Can't be a big cutout at all because I only have less than 10 millimeters spare really more like nine which means most of the bead will be cut out but not all of it but I will put some trim around the window later so uh, that will be covered up but before I do the cutout I will uh, do the half lap joint to create the half lap joint to make the cladding windproof and uh, not so prone to show gaps when the wood moves because of the changes in the season and therefore in the heat and the moisture in the air I will make half lap joint and I will cut out about 10 millimeters on this side underneath the beam profile, bead profile. and uh, the next board I'm using this scrap piece for demonstration. I will do the opposite on that and I will cut out on the top part. So that piece that's left over on the next board it will pass under the first board. And what that means is that the wood can shrink or swell and the gap between them can uh, increase when it's dry and uh, tighten up when it's more moist in the air and that gap will only pass through half of the cladding so there will never be a gap all the way through even if there were to be a gap there would be a wind membrane that stops the wind but this is much better it looks nicer also I probably wouldn't have to put any wind membrane before I put the cladding on because of this half lap technique but I did it just as an extra thing and because I had some wind membrane to spare it doesn't hurt to do it so that's uh, the next operation after I cut all the boards to size you can plane this with the combination plane I showed you or with the rebate plane I, that I also have but I will do it on the table saw because it's faster and uh, it's still pretty rough woodworking if it was a cabinet it would be nicer to plane it to be more exact and not risk any small tear outs in the ends but on this door for my workshop it really doesn't matter so I will uh, do it on the table saw to save some time
same really here. But I will turn it around so I take the cut out on the top side here. There we have it. Now I'm going to do this on all the boards. Almost. That's an exception of uh, two of the long boards. But we'll get to that later. This door will have a, an extra trim piece on top of the cladding, and that will uh, that will overlap the other door. This is the one I will open first. So there's no need to put a bead on the edge here. Neither is it any need for a bead on uh, the edge of the other door, because that will also be covered by the trim piece. So I will uh, take one of the long boards that has most tear outs in the bead and just cut it to the right width and make a half lap on one side. These boards will be cut to length and there will be spare pieces left which I will use to put here on the top. I will do the cut out for the window on this long board first. So I can place all the other boards onto this when it has its uh, proper place. When doing that I can take the exact measurement out to, to the other edge before I rip one of the long boards down. So I don't accidentally rip a couple of millimeters too much from it. Marking out for the window and also measure under the board how much to take off. As I said before it's 9 millimeters. I'm setting the combination square to 9 millimeters.
see if that fits. Rather nice. I'll put a couple of clamps on the board so it doesn't move. Like so, and then I can... boards in place. Now I can take my measurement on this side. Seven millimeters, including the overlap joint. That left some of the beading in the board, but that doesn't matter since I'm gonna cut out for the overlap joint and. Uh, that's gonna be done like so. Can't ask for anything more than that. One mark for the bottom, one mark for the top. And then I measure from inside of the joint out to the edge of the window how much to take out. 91 millimeters. And I measure that, including they overlap. Setting this to 91 mil. Yes, excellent. Slightly tight, which is always nice. I'm going to rough cut the three mill boards so I get stumps for filling in here in between between here and here. And uh, then I will just nail everything to the door and uh, cut it straight in the top and the bottom. This 
looks really good. I'll nail the boards to the door now and uh, do the final cuts. That's the cladding boards nailed in place. Next step is to cut the boards on the top and the bottom. And here on the top, they are supposed to be four centimeters proud of the door. Not sure if I can do that with the circular saw or if I should just hand saw. I can strike a line with a chalk line of course but I prefer to work like this if possible. Yeah clearly there's no room to put, put the saw on this side so I can't use the guide rail. I guess I can freehand it. And I still struggle with enjoying hand sawing.
Did anybody say dust collection? I'll get to that eventually. Just take the block plane to that as well, and then it's time to do the other door. I forgot about the edge plane, of course. When I've done that, I'll do the other door. Using my number four wholesaler's favorite easy tungsten wipe. It's uh, very convenient for a whole lot of different things. Now it's time for the second door. Alright, this is as far as I come today. 
it's getting late now so I have to finish here. I have uh, finished the cladding on the outside of both doors, uh, complete with playing in the bead profile on the cladding boards. I'm very happy with that look. I think it looks a lot better than it would have done without the bead and I'm very happy that I finally had an excuse to try and make one. I haven't done that before. It won't be the last time I can tell you that. Very rewarding. The next thing will probably be to fit some trim around the window holes here or if I don't do that I will uh, flip the doors around and uh, insulate them and put the indoor cladding on if I have enough lumber for that. I have to check that otherwise I'll have to take a trip to the lumber yard. So uh, if you enjoyed this episode please like and subscribe and uh, I hope you'll be back for more when I post another one. Until then, thank you for watching.